Sure. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the September 18th meeting of the Hyde Park Planning Board. Please take note of all the exits around the room in case of emergency. And now join me as we reaffirm our fealty to the American flag. I love I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first item on the agenda are continued public hearings for Taconic Realty. This is, that's right, Mr. Oliver is recused. Mr. Waters, our alternate, is on board for the next two applications. This, these are a combined public hearing, Taconic Realty and Hudson Valley Hospice. There's currently an existing shopping center located at 374, 378, 382, and 386 Valid Avenue. Applicants are seeking approval to divide that into four separate lots once the subdivision is undertaken and filed. They would also be looking for site plan approval for four lots. The first representative, Ms. Leibold, is representing owners of lots two, three, and four, and afterwards we'll have representatives from Hudson Valley Hospice on lot one. May I get a motion to reopen the public hearings? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ms. Leibold, any new comments? Good evening. No, I, I don't think I do. I think we've provided the board and the consultants with <laughs> everything that we needed um, that was very complicated, so I appreciate everyone's patience and Ms. Axelson's coordination in trying to get these numbers. It's very complicated calculations. Um, together. I, I so will I admit straight out that we have a, we're the only town that lists scale and so it can be complicated. Thank you for all of you working together in partnership, sure. all the consultants, our consultants, and I want to take a moment to compliment our staff even though Ms. Whitman is shutting the door. Uh, it takes a lot of patience to see the number of resolutions that we're going back and forth today to keep track of them. And I want to thank our consultants also for turning around on a dime because I know what went involved into everything today. Yes. Okay. And thank you guys for working with them. Uh, anything else? That is it. So I think everyone has the final numbers, and, and unless anyone has any questions, no, we don't have No, they're, they're pretty heavily conditioned approvals, but that's because there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Yes. So any other comments from consultants? Only that the original dialogue about scale and everything was your email. <laughs> that's what I meant when I said somebody put something to, you know, get the no, but it's that's how it works. We weren't sure. Good. Comments, Ms. Palladaro? No, no uh, Just uh, so the board's clear on what's happening tonight. <laughs> we have joint public hearings on the subdivision, site plan, and special use permit application. Um, you'll recall that we're doing a coordinated seeker review for the Taconic and Hospice sites because it's one big site currently that's being broken up into four. So when it comes time to do the seeker review, you'll be considering it for both sites. Um, or all four, so to speak. Yes, all four. <laughs> all four sites, both applicants. Um, and then, um, then there are particular resolutions for the subdivision and site plan for Taconic, and then for the site plan for hospice. And so we'll just review them all one at a time. Would the board like to make any additional comments? No. Anyone? No. Would anyone from the public like to speak about these applications? There being none, who has the resolution? First, has everyone had a chance to review parts two and three of the environmental assessment form as prepared by Ms. Axelson? I have. Yes. Yes. Everyone? Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Good. Yes. Then who has the resolution for the negative declaration? I do. Thank you. Resolution to adopt a negative, de negative declaration to Conic Realty and Hudson Valley Hospice, September 18th, 2019, resolution number 2018-29A, whereas, 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 whereas. Now, th therefore, it be resolved that the planning board hereby adopt a neg negative declaration finding that the project as proposed will not result in any significant environmental impacts and that a draft environmental impact statement will not be prepared. Be it further resolved that the clerk hereby authorized and directed is hereby authorized and directed to send a copy of this resolution to all involved and interested interested agencies. With a list that follows. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Aye. 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 You have to read them out loud. Okay. The motion carries unanimously. Now make it a motion to close the public hearings for subdivision, site plan for Taconic Realty, and site plan for hospice. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. First, we would do the Taconic subdivision and site plan subdivision resolution. 
Is that you? That's me. Okay, resolution to grant conditional final subdivision approval and conditional site plan approval to lots two through four for Taconic Realty. Resolution number 2018-29B, whereas, 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 now therefore be it resolved that the planning board determines the number <coughs> of spaces proposed on lots two to four are the minimum necessary to serve the project pursuant to section 108-5.10F of the zoning law. Be it further resolved that the planning board hereby approves a subdivision plat and authorizes the chair or his authorized designee to sign the subdivision plat after compliance with the following conditions. One, payment of all fees in escrow. Two, revision of sheet SB1 to show and label the reciprocal <laughs> cross-access easements, water line easements, sewer line easements, and other easements for the continued use of shared parking, lighting, snow storage, and other site improvements. Three, revision of sheet SB1 to clearly show and label the proposed snow storage easement area as follows. A, revise the label for proposed 30-foot snow storage easement to, pro to read proposed 30-foot <coughs> snow storage easement for lots two, three, and four. B, label the northern and southern ends of the proposed 30-foot snow storage easements for lots two, three, and four. C, delete the hash mark shaded area at the eastern end of lot four and behind the building on lot two. And D, delete the dash line area labeled snow storage area for all lots two, three, and four at the eastern end of lot four and behind the building on lot two and delete the corresponding label. Four, <coughs> revision of the summary chart of zoning information on the subdivision plat as follows. A. Revi revise sheet SB1 so that the total proposed site values are consistent with the sum of the individual lot proposed values for maximum impervious coverage parking in square feet, including proposed lot 1. B. Revise sheet SB1 so that the total proposed site values are consistent with the sum of the indiv individual lot proposed values for green to asphalt ratio, including proposed lot 1, with a lot 1 value stated as for other lots with SF, REQ, SF, and percent PRO. C. Revise sheet SB1 so that a new row is added to be labeled as existing scale GSF with values in SF showing the required scale value of 7,500 7, square foot per lot and existing scale value for the entire site which is 73,105 square feet and existing scale values for each of the proposed lots that add up to the value for the entire site including 18,006 square feet for lot one 37,695 square feet for lot two, 3,626 square feet for lot three, and 13,778 square feet for lot four. D, revise sheet SB1 so that a new row is added to be labeled scale 50% expansion GSF and allocation with values in square feet showing how 50% of the existing scale for, entire, for the entire site of 73,105 square feet, which is approximately 36,552.5 square feet is allocated to each of the proposed lots as follows. 9,358 square feet would be allocated to lot 1, 27,194.5 square feet would be allocated to lot 2 for future development, and 0 square feet would be allocated to each of lots 3 and 4. E. Revised sheet SB1 so that the row labeled scale GSF is revised to be labeled proposed scale GSF mm -hmm. with a proposed resulting scale value for the entire site and proposed scale values for each lot noting whether the allocated portion of the 50% expansion is currently proposed or allocated for future use. Accordingly, the proposed scale for lot one would be 27,364 square feet. The proposed scale values must be consistent with the corresponding values for lot one as presented on the hospice site plans. Five. Approval of water and septic system details by the Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority, including formation of a part county district by the Dutchess County Legislature, as evidenced by fully executed memorandums of understanding for water and sewer service. Six, revision of sheet SB1 as follows. A, add meets and bounds to the snow storage easement for lots two, three, and four. B, add a note referring to the legal instruments for the snow storage easement and a maintenance agreement for its use. C. Delineate proposed easements for water and sewer facilities for access by the DCWWA or other municipal agencies and D, show any existing rights of way and or easements and add notation about each or confirm that there are no existing rights of way and or easements. Seven, approval by the planning board attorney of a declaration of easements, covenants and restrictions establishing, establishing cross access easements for vehicular and pedestrian access, parking, snow storage, water lines, sewer lines, electricity, light poles, and any other common elements. Eight, approval by the town attorney of a sidewalk easement 
across lots one to four, providing the town with the right, but not the obligation to maintain the easement area. Nine, proof of record recordation with the Dutchess County Clerk of all required easements, including the declaration of easements, covenants and restrictions, and sidewalk easement. Be it further resolved that the Planning Board hereby approves the Taconic Site Plan Set and approves the Chair or his authorized designee to sign the Taconic Site Plan Set after compliance with the following conditions. One, payment of all fees in escrow. Two, filing of the approved subdivision plat with the Dutchess County Clerk. Three, revision of site plan sheets OV-1, SU-2, SU-3, and EA-1 mm -hmm. to show and label the reciprocal cross access easements, water line easements, sewer line easements, and other easements for the continued use of shared parking, lighting, snow storage, and other site improvements. Four, revision of site plan sheets OV-1, SU-2 and EA-1 to clearly show and label the proposed snow storage easement in the area as follows. A, <clears throat> revise the label for proposed 30-foot snow storage easement to read proposed 30-foot snow storage easements for lots 2, 3, and 4. B, label the northern and southern ends of the proposed 30-foot snow storage easements for lots 2, 3, and 4. C, Delete the hash mark shaded area at the, we at the eastern end of lot four and behind the building on lot two. And D, delete the, let the dashed line area labeled snow storage area for all lots two, three, and four at the eastern end of lot four and behind the building on lot two and delete the corresponding label. Five, revision of the summary chart of zoning information on the overall and individual site plans as follows. A. Revise site plan so sheets OV-1, SU- This is the right. same condition as on the prior subdivision, so we can stipulate. It as, right as previously stated, <laughs> it's the same conditions as stated for- uh, Condition four of four the subdivision. Of the subdivision. You Thank you. <laughs> is, it, is that just five? Uh, I think- Or is it six also? I think the next one is the same as, the, as yeah. Five. The next one is the same. So as number six. five and six are also the same as in the uh, subdivision. Mm -hmm. The changes. What about seven and eight? No, those. No, they're oh. different. Okay. <laughs> seven. Revision of site plan sheets SU dash SU dash two SU dash three and SU dash four to provide the following note: freestanding sign locations are shown in close proximity to where new or replacement signs will be erected. Sign details will be, will be reviewed upon application for a sign permit. If visibility is an issue based on sign design, <coughs> the sign structure location may be adjusted slightly without the necessity of a site plan amendment. Eight, revision of site plan sheets, OV-1, SU-2, SU-3, SU-4, to add notations stating that any future change to any lighting fixtures, including pole-mounted lighting, shall comply shall comply with current zoning requirements and standards for lighting and shall require site plan amendment approval. Nine, revision of the site plan set to label the highway boundary and show any utility connections within the highway right of way and call out item numbers for all work to be done within the state right of way, i.e. curbing, sidewalks, signs, striping, etc. Ten, revision of the site plan set to label the roadway across the street, Elks Lane. Do I have a second? Second. second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for reading. Congratulations, and for that <laughs> monumental reading. Yeah. <laughs> Studying under you for years. <laughs> okay. And who has the next resolution? For I do. Oh. Drink more water. Yeah. Make it your <laughs> All right. Resolution granting site plan and special use permit approval for Hudson Valley Hospice. Resolution number 2019 10. Whereas, whereas, whereas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the planning board hereby makes the following findings. Pursuant to section 108-8.4A of the zoning law. One, the project will comply with the applicable requirements contained in articles four and five of the zoning law, of the zoning law, will be consistent with the proposes, the purposes of the neighborhood business zoning district, and has been given due consideration by the planning board. The hospice use is an existing use and the expanded building is consistent, is consistent with the scale of other buildings in the area. 
Two, the project is consistent with the purposes of the zoning law. Three, the project will not result in excessive off-premise off premises noise, dust, odor, solid waste, or glare, or create any public or private nuisances. Four, the project will not cause significant traffic congestion, impair pedestrian safety, or overload existing roads, considering their current width, surfacing condition, and any in proposed improvements made to them by the applicant. The project will improve pedestrian circulation on and across the site. Five, the project is suitable for the site considering the site's size, location, topography, vegetation, soils, natu natural ha habitat, hydrology, hydrogeology, and if appropriate, its ability to be buffered or screened from neighboring properties and public roads. The project site is an existing shopping center which has been previously disturbed. Six, the project will be subject to such conditions on operation design and layout of structures and provision of buffer areas as may be necessary to ensure compatibility with surrounding uses and to protect the natural, historic, and scenic resources of the town. Be it further resolved that the planning board hereby approve, approves the hospice site plan set and associated special use permit and authorizes the chair or his authorized designee to sign the hospice site plan <coughs> set after <coughs> compliance with the following conditions. One, payment of all fees in escrow. Two, filing of the subdivision plat with the Dutchess County Clerk. Three, revision of site plan sheets three of six, site and grading plan, and four of six, erosion and sediment control plan to show and label the reciprocal cross access easements and other e easements for continued use of existing shared access, parking, lighting, water and sewer facilities, and other site improvements. Four, revision of the title sheet, plan sheet one, summary chart to be consistent with the Taconic site plan sheets OV-1 and subdivision plat sheet SB-1 as follows. A, confirm that the, pro that the proposed value for total impervious surface for all parking stalls and aisles, 27,107 square feet, is consistent with the corresponding value on, on Taconic sheet OV-1 for maximum impervious coverage parking or revise the title sheet summary chart accordingly. B, revise the rows for green to asphalt ratio to be one row and to include information consistent with the green to asphalt ratio row for other lots on Taconic site plan sheet OV-1 and, sub and subdivision plan sheet SB-1 including SF REQ, SF and percent PRO and so that the total proposed site values are consistent with the sum of the lot one proposed <coughs> values for green to as asphalt ratio. C add a new row to be labeled existing scale GSF showing the required scale value of 7,500 square feet per lot and with an existing scale value of 18,006 square feet. D, add a new row to be labeled scale 50% expansion GSF and allocation with a value of 9,358 square feet. E, add a new row to be labeled proposed scale GSF with the proposed resulting scale value of 27,364 square feet. <coughs> F, delete rows regarding scale that are not consistent with the above added rows and are not consistent with the summary chart zoning summary and scale values on the, the conic site plan sheet OV-1 and subdivision plan sheet SB-1. G, add notation to the bottom of the summary chart indicating that the, hosp that the hospice 1.939 acre site results from the Taconic subdivision in which 50% of the existing scale for entire Taconic subdivision site of 73,105 square feet, which is approximately 36,552.5 square feet, was allocated to each of the proposed lots, including 9,358 square feet of the allocated scale to the 1.939 acre site as lot one. The note should indicate that although this rep represents a 52% increase in scale on the hospice site, lot one, the overall increase in scale on the entire Taconic subdivision site is 50%, which scale increases allocated as set forth on the Taconic subdivision and site plans. Five, revision of the title sheet, plan sheet one, summary chart to add a row for a second front yard <coughs> setback of 20 feet along School Street, which would, which would require relocation of the proposed pergola. Six, revision of sheet three of six, site and grading plan as follows. A, show a front yard set, setback along School Street and B, relo relocate the proposed pergola to comply with the 20 foot front yard setback. Seven, revision of sheet three of six, site and grading plan to show and add notes about any deed restrictions or covenants. 
8, revision of site plan sheets 3 of 6, site and grading plan, and 4 of 6, erosion and s sediment control plan, to refer to the Taconic site plan sheets EA-1 and subdivision pl plat sheet SB-1. 9. Revision of site plan sheets 3 of 6, site and grading plan, and 4 of 6, erosion and sediment control plan as follows. A. Delineate proposed easements for water and sewer facilities for access by the DCWWA or other municipal agencies. B. Label meets and bounds for proposed easements. 10. Revision of site plan sheets 3 of 6, site and grading plan, and 4 of 6, erosion and sediment control plan to show any existing rights of way and or easements and add notation about each. 11. Revision of site plan, site plan sheets 3 of 6, site and grading plan, to add a notation stating that any future change to any lighting fixtures, including pole-mounted lighting, shall comply with the current zoning requirements and standards for lighting and apply for site plan amendment approval. 12. Revision of the site plan set to, set to label to highway boundary and show any utility connections within the highway right-of-way and call out item, num item numbers yeah. for all work to be done within the state right-of-way, i.e. Yeah. curbing, sidewalks, signs, striping, etc. 13. Revision of the site plan set to label the roadway across the street, Elks Lane. 14. Approval from the Dutchess County Department of Health and Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority for methods of water supply and wastewater disposal. 15. Revision of the site plan set to remove the third proposed wall sign above the employee entrance or reduce to two square feet the maximum for a directional sign and revision of the site plan set to relocate the existing freestanding sign onto the site. Be it further resolved that prior to the zoning administrator authorizing the issuance of a building permit for the site, the applicant shall provide plans showing the design of all retaining walls stamped by a licensed professional engineer. Be it further resolved that the applicant shall apply for a sign permit for any proposed changes to existing signs or new signs. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously as well. Congratulations. <coughs> Thank you. Good luck sorting all this out. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to point out for anybody watching or listening that even though these were very conditioned approvals, much of the conditions are the same on both sets, and you guys have already agreed on everything anyway, so this shouldn't be a big deal. And I'm sorry that we couldn't get scale answered earlier, but at least we got to it tonight beforehand. So good luck. Thank you. Mr. Kaminsky, if, we, if I can do anything else for you in terms of your deadlines, as always, just let me know. Thank okay. Yeah. Anytime. Thank you. Okay. Can I um, ask that we pass a resolution absolving Ms. Dexter for reading <laughs> any further <laughs> resolutions for the remainder of the month of September? <laughs> So moved. <laughs> Aye. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. You get a pass. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a workshop item. <laughs> this is Asahi Shuzo Saki Manufacturer and Brewery. The applicants are seeking a site plan amendment to relocate a slightly enlarged wastewater treatment facility. It's being moved a little bit further out of the adjacent area to the stream uh, and a little bit further north, I believe, by 43 feet north. Let me turn it over to you guys. Mr. Zarin, welcome back. Uh, it's good to be back. So I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but um, construction began the in the interior oh. on Monday. Yay. I saw the fence. Uh, Bravo. Approximately Terrific. two weeks, and then it goes outside. And as Stu said, uh, there'll be a swip um, ribbon cutting. <laughs> you really thought it was going to be a soggy plan. It's a swim. <laughs> it's a, um, so, uh, so we're here today, as you all know, that um, when we received the original site plan approvals, the waste treatment plant was still under construction or still under design, I should say, um, and was extremely complex and complicated taking the Japanese uh, design specifications and converting them to US, United States standards and building codes. And uh, hats off to, to Chazen in particular, who was the US representative and engaged in that exercise, let alone the time differences and, and uh -huh. what that caused. So, um, as you recall, we had a, a placeholder um, footprint on the original plan. 
um, and um, we had as part of our approvals presented to you uh, the exterior materials, material board, and alike. So um, for all practical purposes, it hasn't changed dramatically from the final design. Um, the original was approximately 5,364 square foot building located 45 feet to the east of the main brewery, uh, approximately 120 feet from the closest residence. Um, and I believe we had approximately, um, we had a um, ZBA, we were, had about 2,500 feet of encroachment into the stream corridor. And that was our variance that, that we had received. Um, the final design has increased the building by about 956 square feet to 6,320. Um, that was primarily due, and I'll, I'll let Mark later on address that, again, to fitting and changing some of the equipment to U.S. building code standards. Uh, when we when we cited or designed the building, it was really uh, a lot of that design work had not occurred, and we were dealing really with hypothetical equipment, which at that point were Japanese sizing. So now we're now we have obviously the final size. Um, it's being moved closer to the property line uh, because of the um, because of the size, and we wanted to avoid encroachment, further encroachment into the stream corridor. So, and and I've had this, I think, discussion with you previously that we're probably going to move it some, and whether so, it moves from 120 feet uh, to the nearest building, 80 feet from 120 to 80 feet. So there's approximately uh, 40 foot. Uh, movement towards the property line still outside the 50-foot setback. So it's outside the 50-foot setback and there's additional 20 to 30 feet from the property line to the house. Uh, we have proposed uh, the addition of 17 mature tree plantings additional to what you've seen on the original plan to further screen that. It's already a, a, a somewhat landscape vegeta vegetative but but uh, per some initial discussions we had with some of you, we're enhancing that, and that that we laid out. That's laid out in your in your documents in the plans. Uh, the SWIP has not um, changed. All the sizing, uh, Stu will address that. Um, so the um, <clears throat> one of the advantages of this is we've reduced the encroachment into the stream corridor. So the uh, variance that we had received primarily, we were about a 23 foot encroachment in, uh, into the stream corridor and the generator about a 14 foot uh, five inch encroachment. It totaled approximately 2,546 feet, square feet of encroachment into stream card up. The ZBA had provided us a variance for that. Um, we are now reducing the encroachment to 15 feet, five inches. So that's an eight foot reduction encroachment into the stream corridor. Um, now we are adding, I forgot to mention, we are adding a small roofing overhanging to the building. And it, I, I'll let Mark address that, but I think you'll like it aesthetically. It makes it look nicer. It breaks up the, the the length of the building. It does. It looks really cool. Okay. Being honest. Good. Good. Um, and uh, same materials, same material board and alike. That hasn't that hasn't changed. Um, with with the overhanging, we would have about 11 percent reduction in the encroachment into the stream corridor. Uh, if you uh, without the proposed overhang, which is really not an encroachment, you know, it's not a physical encroachment. We, if we were just looking at the footprint, we have a 46% reduction of encroachment into the corridor, the actual footprint of the building. Um, the chair of ZBA was kind enough to uh, put us on to their um, next ZBA meeting on ninth on. Um, on uh, September 25th, we were we were directed uh, by your staff, um, 
and I guess it's a um, practice of the town that even though our encroachment is less, it's in a different place. It's it's moved. The buildings moved, so it's a different different location of the encroachment, albeit less impact, but it still requires a ZBA variant. So we'll get an opportunity to go back. Um, uh, as I said, um, <coughs> Stu, I think I'll just touch on quickly some of the stormwater odor control mechanisms for your um, edification, and then uh, Mark can give a little more specifics as to the design of the building. Um, hopefully, um, you know, we request to, as appropriate, you know, scheduling a public hearing uh, at your earliest meeting to try to move the process. So, with that, I was going to recommend that we do a public hearing at the second meeting of October. That way, we could reaffirm Seeker. It would still be before the ZBA meeting. That would, I believe, they'd be able. To, I hope they'll set a public hearing at this meeting next week, which that would still allow us. If I set a public hearing, then I'm have to redo it again and again. I think it saved time if we just did it once. That's up to you. I can do it at the next meeting. I was just going to recommend that we do it closer to the ZBA. We also have to send to county planning. And they have a, we're going to do that tonight, refer to county planning, and they have a month. <laughs> so I thought it would make more sense to have the okay. public hearing great. past the time. Okay. okay, great. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Messenger. Hi. Mr. Messenger, the Shapes and Companies, I first of all want to apologize for bringing such puny boards. Um, <laughs> Mark, 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 Mark brought the big boards. I have the little ones. Um, let me just walk quickly through a couple of site plan aspects. Um, I think Mr. Zarin touched on most of them. Uh, this is the wastewater uh, treatment plant. As uh, Mr. Zarin said, we've moved it 43 feet close uh, to the north, um, still within the setback. This does um, three things. The primary reason was we wanted to get it off the slope as much as possible. And by doing this, we really, we really succeeded in that. Um, it has the, um, the subsidiary benefits of moving us further away from the stream. And there's less tree clearing involved. So those are all good things. The, um, the building, as Mr. Zarin said, is about 956 feet larger, um, again, primarily due to uh, our code requirements. Um, the, um, the Japanese designers gave us a shell. And then um, we started to talk to them about clearances and walkways and you know, fire requirements, and so the building got bigger. I um, want to show you, we put a, um, a turning template on the plan for your, uh, the town's fire truck to demonstrate that we can negotiate um, back here in the new location, so that's important. As Mr. Zarin mentioned, uh, we added screening uh, to the top of this berm. Um, I went out and took a look at the berm um, when, when we kind of finalized the location. I think between the berm and the screening, we do a pretty good job of keeping it away, keeping it out of view of the houses um, that are behind there. Um, we submitted an amended SWIP. There's um, almost no difference in the amount of stormwater runoff because one of the advantages of moving it where we moved it is we're now um, reusing existing pavement. That's, uh, that's behind the building. So I think the increase in impervious areas is, is, is less than the 956 uh, feet. Um, stormwater is managed in two ways. The stormwater from the eastern side of the building and part of the northern side goes into a stone line ditch, which runs along the back of the building and then connects to our underground system and into the retention pond. Stormwater from the rest of the building goes into dry wells. So the, 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 the amendments are really, um, are really pretty small. Um, we mentioned odor control, so the building has a fan and duct system so that all the air is drawn in and then out through a discharge uh, structure. The discharge structure has an activated charcoal filter in it, and that's what uh, takes care of any odors that you might have. That gets changed, we're told, about every six months, so, and it's easy to know when it's time for change. <laughs> yes, yeah, like, sorry, you get thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a, uh, the detail on the outfall structure. I wanted to bring it to your attention because um, when we, we submitted the first application on our EAF, we said possible need for an Army Corps of Engineers permit. We no longer need that. What we've done is we've designed the outfall so that it's out of the time. There's a tiny little fringe of wetlands along the stream. Um, it, it's easy to see if you look at it. There's a row of skunk cabbage. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as the, you get up the hill, you're not in the wetlands. So 
what we do is we go down, uh, we go down <coughs> the hill, and then there's an energy dissipation structure because we don't want to send out the, the, um, the waste product at a high velocity so it settles in there and then it comes out. But it's all before the wetlands, so we don't need a, any kind of permit from the Army Corps. Of course, we need the permit from the DEC. This is not a DEC wetland, um, if everybody remembers that part of it. So just a couple more things. Um, this is uh, the lighting plan. We actually, um, with, the, with the new location, we remove a couple of uh, parking lot lights um, from the back corner of the building, so there's actually less lighting back there. Um, all the fixtures um, on the building are pack lights. You know, they're mm -hmm. shielded and, and go down, so um, there's really not going to be any light spillover. We, um, we have a photometric plan, mm -hmm. which I can flip over, but I'm tired of flipping over, but it pretty well <laughs> demonstrates <laughs> that, um, that we're at zero. Um, in all but one tiny little corner of the setback. Uh, this corner here, we're at a 0 0.1 foot candle. I was going to say it's 0.1. Yeah, I, I got, I knew, I, saw, I read it. It's a tiny, tiny, but it's only in a little corner. You, you obviously looked at this plan pretty close. I did. You did. Yeah, but so I think, I think we've done a pretty good job there. And in fact, there's less light <coughs> because of the removal of the two, uh, two of the light bulbs, that, uh, two the light bulbs were there. So I think that's, um, that's what I wanted to tell you about on the site plan. I think Mark's going to talk about the uh, architectural elevations. Thank you. Um, if you uh, recall the previous version of this, it was basically uh, two boxes. This one about uh, a foot and a half taller than this part is here, extending roughly the, the, the majority of the distance, just about 100 feet. Um, the southerly portion is more or less as it was. The middle portion is 85 feet, and the elevated portion here, which is actually at two levels, is about uh, 20, 22 feet. Um, so it's broken up per the requirements of <coughs> the zoning. It does have overhangs, which uh, are similar to those in the rice polishing building. The finishes are similar to those in the rice polishing building. The vertical uh, wood panels, TNG panels. Um, there are more openings. Uh, these are typically due to the louvering required to exhaust um, the conditions inside the building. Um, overhead coiling doors uh, will be painted similarly again to the uh, to that of the rice polishing building. Um, it's not obviously it's not identical, but it, it's in the same family as the rice polishing building. Uh, which was our charge. Um, <coughs> typically, we, the center lines of the, <coughs> of the roofs are aligned. Um, so at the end, they, uh, our ridge lines are identical and removed. Basically, the building steps up fairly evenly one to the other. Um, the, uh, and it all, basically, it's an inside-out building. It's a building <laughs> that reflects the machinery inside and is a cowl or an, an enclosure for that building. It uh, basically serves the machinery. But as uh, Stuart alluded, it uh, did require you know, a little bit of growing to allow um, uh, safe egress and passage adjacent to the machinery. Um, there is a uh, fall off on the backside. Um, it's virtually I mean, where it meets the ground, it's level on the <coughs> west side, on the parking lot side. There is also similarly to the rice polishing building, a stone base granite, because we figure salt and snow and ice will prevail uh, where we are here, just as it would out at the rice polishing building. Um, the scale uh, is broken down. Um, the, uh, it's a building that primarily the if you s the visitors will see it, they'll see it from the parking lot or f entering from the driveway. So they'll see the small end. And the, um, the perspective will, will tend to make, that's what you're gonna see, basically, from, from the building side of it and from this side. You're, it's because this is the focus, this is primarily what you're gonna take mm -hmm. as, the, as the size. Um, I don't know that there's anything else. The, um, talk about drainage, there are no gutters. The, um, we do have the dry wells, um, the, the roof, uh, sheet metal, again, insulated sheet metal, similar to the rice ball. I mean, that's, I'm a broken record there. It's, it's, it is a cousin or, or near relative of the rice ball. Thank you. 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 Th
Do you have any questions? Well, first, um, I want to just say that this is probably the most attractive wastewater treatment facility <laughs> I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Thank you. When we saw it with the perspective of all the setbacks and the roof lines, it's like, that's really gorgeous. I need to also remind everyone that, because uh, there were some questions earlier from some, I can't remember, I think it was consultants. Ms. Moss opined that this is part of the principal use after Mr. Zarin argued successfully that this will be shown as part of the tourist element. There'll be a video camera showing what goes on in here. Reminder also that when you hear odor control that this is processed waste. This is only the water that's being used for the manufacture of the sake. There's a separate sanitary uh, wastewater system that already exists that will be utilized yeah. for police, bathrooms, police. et cetera. Yes. Um, and given that the, it was, probably, I think, me, that we were discussing the fact that they're moving it closer to the buildings, the residential buildings. Um, I said you probably will need to add some more landscaping, in which they've done uh, all in through the Berman through here. But I also want to point out that even though you can't see it, the houses that are over here, because this is on a sort of a half moon, the houses that are closest are actually pretty far. They're, they're further away than what you think. They're, and all of them have extensive uh, kind of woods, yeah, vegetation in between where the property line is and where the homes are. So adding that much vegetation or landscaping is a buffer really is just a sort of Extra, extra make sure that nothing untoward happens with their values etc or sounds um, but again I don't think that there would be even though Mr. Messenger said you would know you need to change the charcoal filters I'm not really sure what that sim would be like with just processed water from sake uh, it's not like it's, uh, it's sanitary waste um, everything else you guys those were my notes you've concluded to me this seems fairly simple you told us at the beginning it was even labeled on the plans that this was more or less the location, which normally we wouldn't agree to, but you said they were still under design. We wanted to get this thing going. So I also happened to meet Mr. Kruikshank when I was here last Friday for a meeting of Consigli Kirchhoff, I think it is still, who's doing the demolition. And he was really excited to be pulling the demolition permit. So he's going to start this week. So that's great news. Yeah. I, I wanted to mention also just the permitting status. So we've submitted. Um, the plans and the engineering reports uh, to both DEC and DOH. Mm -hmm. So that process is underway. Great. Yeah. I, I also want to just mention on the, on the trees, um, relatively mature, so the six, six, seven, and eight foot trees. Mm -hmm. So they're not, you know, just little three footers. I mean, they'll, <laughs> they'll immediately kick in. I promise you, we don't really let two or three footers through the board. Um, <laughs> it's, it's in our code with the DBH or caliper has to be at diameter breast height, so we try to enforce right, that right. without being too burdensome to applicants. But in this case, if you recall before, the only time we heard in the public hearing anyone speak was at the very end, and it was a person who'd lived at the opposite or toward Correct. the west. Uh, and, and that was all right. satisfied also with uh, landscaping changes. Right. Ms. Ackleson, comments? Um, just, just quickly, um, the letter that Michael did and the project assessment, I guess it's uh, impact comparison, very helpful to be able to go right through, look at the plans, pinpoint a couple of things. And so, of course, um, at an agenda meeting with, with Michael and one or two other board members, we discussed the screening because, of course, Pete and I saw the building height. Um, and it seemed uh, that the plantings were adequate. And um, I'm sure Pete will take a look at the SWIP, but I'll alert him to some of the comments that were made tonight. Um, so I don't have any, any concerns. When I told Mr. Sotero he could take the night off because this is the only night to not be at a meeting, I said, just remember you have to look at the SWIP because there will be some revisions and changes. I also forgot to add that it's a quirk of our code that for an application to be administratively complete, there has to be an EAF submitted even for type two actions <laughs> because of the way our code is written. So we just got the paper uh, version recently, so thank you. I'm sorry, that's, again, that's just a quirk of the code and it's supposed to be administratively complete before it comes on to us. So. But we already kind of have the narrative, so. We already have the narrative, but again, it's just a requirement of our of code that maybe we can work on at some point later on in the future. Ms. Paudreau, any comments? Not at this point. No legal issues that you see? Um, well, the, the question I was having <laughs> and I'll have to discuss with Tad is um, scale. Does this change the scale of the site? So we'll just talk with Tad about how Thank that's you. gonna be calculated. Because um, some of this is already on top of impervious. Right, so I'm not sure that it will make a difference. But and some of the area back there was used for parking, some was used for dry aisles, so it'll be a little complicated <laughs> to be honest with you. But the applicants did reduce 
impervious coverage beforehand, if not scale, yes, they did. by getting rid of some of the parking areas. So, so we'll, we'll talk through that. And then uh, tonight, if the board wishes, it could make a motion to refer this to Dutchess County Planning for review. Thank you. Ms. Weiser, comments? I love the final design. Uh, you were able to take a, a wonderful building and make it even more handsome. It's, it's it, from every angle. I wish it could be seen from <laughs> all around. <laughs> See the Hyde Park Waste Treatment Plant. Right? Yeah. It's got a nice ring to it. <laughs> Mr. Pickett, any comments? Uh, again, really like it. I'll ditto what she said. Only one small item in my review of it. You're going to have two of the EV parking places there. They're on the site plan. I saw. I saw. They're, them. they're on the site plan. If you, <laughs> yes. <sir. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're there on the EAF. Uh, take a look at page seven J seven because it. I think it's referencing that you you don't have any electric vehicle type stuff. So it's just a check. Okay. Just a correction. Right. Right. So I think at this time, oh. you did the microphone, one. please. We didn't have them. Yeah. Right. Right. It, so, right. The correct. time. So. Maybe when you guys do Seeker, we can all kind of mark that out if that's okay. I don't have to give you guys 14 more copies. <laughs> I can. Oh, can you repeat that we're proposing still to have the electric, yeah. the electric vehicle? We, we didn't do the original the EAF, and I, I missed that change when I sent in the amended one. They used the original EAF, and then he highlighted oh, that's the right. changes, right. and he forgot to highlight that oh, something okay. that had already been changed. Okay. I think that's acceptable. You're not going to have to make you submit Noted 14. No, 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 no. Thank Thank just <laughs> we have a thorough record now. Thank you. We have a good record. Correction dated initially. Good catch, good catch, Brent. Anything else? I'm good. Thank you, Ms. Dexter. I just want to echo uh, Ms. Wasser's, uh, Ms. Weiser's comments. It's, it is really handsome. It's a nice looking building. I love that the end with the staff the stacking. Yeah, crazy good. That's the best thank view. Really yeah. to look at it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. South view. And I'm I'm happy that you were able to translate everything. That that sounds like it was monumental. 29 submissions from the Japanese. I'm not, oh. not making that up. Oh. 29. Lucky 29. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And you're going to get to read them all. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, that resolution has a drop dead period, right? An it, expiration yes. period. <laughs> I think you guys did a phenomenal job with the design of the building, and I'm very much looking forward to uh, the start of construction and seeing the site change. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Napoli. Kudos across the board. Um, don't mean to repeat what my fellow members have said. The one thing I am curious, and I know we have to wait, it would be interesting to see that with such a different type of design, how well it functions, and does this kind of make the American engineers to start rethinking? <laughs> Oh, Just a uh, curiosity. I doubt we, that. We yeah. refuse to touch that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all, I will, okay. all I will say is that the Japanese company that, that designs the plan is sending their people over to operate it. Oh, so wow. I don't know that we'll learn anything. <laughs> okay. How? Oh, how that's does, right. There's some six to seven people over there. Yeah. How does it get to the plant? Is there an underground pipe? Yeah. yeah. It, it goes into a, a pump and it pumps into the tanks, and, and you don't want to know. But I can show it. I well, now he has it. to speak to Japanese <laughs> to explain it, to describe yeah, we'll watch it. the video And camera. if you recall, we'll go to the tasting um, room and Mr. Watch. Messenger explained one of the reasons for the height of the building is that the, the nature of their design is that they need to be, the tanks have to be basically uh, right. taken oh. up, yeah, moved right. around. Right. We have yeah. the ta remember that the tanks, we, we sunk them as low as we could, but we're limited by the groundwater level. Yeah. And then in turn, so they're partly under you know under the uh, existing grade, but we also need to be able to get them out mm -hmm. um, to service them. So there's a, a crane and gantry system overhead, and that's really what drove the height of the building. And as I said, I think it was rather genius of Mr. Zarin to convince Ms. Moss that this is part of the principal use. Therefore, no variance being required, and that wouldn't change at all with this one. Um, I don't have any other comments to add. I think it's you've done a typically stellar job. Uh, your narrative was clean and easy to follow. I, I don't want to keep sounding like I'm heaping praises on you, but just go polish your halos tonight when you leave uh, <laughs> because everything looks good and clean. Uh, I had not caught the EV stations. I yeah. forgot about that yeah. until Cynthia reminded me that Brent had already picked it up because 
That's our electronic vehicle guy right over here, too. Uh, it's something about that seat. Yep. yep. At any rate, <laughs> make it a motion to uh, refer this to Dutchess County Planning under 239M. So moved. Second. So All in favor? Aye. 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 And it's acceptable for you to set the public hearing for October the 16th. 16th? Make it a motion to set the, uh, the public hearing so for moved. October. Oh. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Anything else from you guys? No, thank you. We'll Thanks. see you in a bit. As always. And people were excited to see the fences go up. Tonight. Oh, those fences yeah. are yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, sh oh, I, I, I told Mr. Cruikshank, so I'm so glad you're pulling the demo permit because I'm already getting people telling me, oh, it's not going to happen now. Is it the town did oh, something wrong? And I'm like, yeah. no, it's taking a while. They really weren't complete. We got them to this point so they could start working on the conditions. But that that's, and I've signed the site plan. That means they're going to go forward. So, and they kept uh, the property there looking beautiful, too. They did. Yeah. Thank the you. property's been well maintained, et cetera, and uh, I think that more and more people that I meet now are excited about this. Yes. Yeah. So I for that matter, I, they I really want to tell you, I, I visited, my wife and I took a trip and we went to Japan, so we visited the facility. How oh. are they making out? How yeah, are they doing? It, it's, so we took a train, a bullet train from, it's outside of Hiroshima, so oh. it's about a 25 minute bullet train outside of Hiroshima. We met, I don't know if you remember, Kuma. He was the, the international marketing guy. He oh, met us right, at the train. Right. The marketing 45 guy. minutes up into the mountains. Wow. Right on a beautiful river, right mm -hmm. up in the mountains. And there and it's a there it's about a it's about a ten story building. Oh wow. And every floor is a different part of the production. And it's mm -hmm. a you know, it's a it's it's a very um, what do I want to call it? Um, sort of hands-on, very bins with the rice fermenting, and and there's a one individual for, at every bin, fully uh, in the white full suit, yeah. white yeah. hazmat white hazmat suit. You go through a little room yeah. and get and get the air aired and everything, and then walk in, uh, head head air dress showers, and yeah. so forth, the whole bit. Then you come down to the lab, and there's the president and the brewmaster in a lab with all types of scientific charts everywhere, tasting every wow. batch that comes out. Wow. And wow. the two of them are wow. sitting, my, my wife and I walk in, and there they are sitting there <laughs> looking at each other, mumbling, you know, <laughs> running around with about, I would say there were about 10 or 15 people working in the lab. Wow. So, and then you go across the river, there's a little bridge, and they have their tasting. They have this beautiful little retail, um, retail establishment and tasting room. So you know, all all with the wood, and that's beautiful. And that was washed away. Right. During right. that wow. flood. So, right. so I got to see exactly that whole river just completely overflew and washed the whole tasting facility, washed the bridge wow. away, and and. Probably wow. went up about three stories into the wow. into the facility, and so. they're already rebuilt. Gone, done. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah, pretty, pretty beautiful, immaculate. I mean, that's it's the Japanese, you know, yes. in the middle the of the mountains, and the whole yeah. establishment. You couldn't find a piece of paper <laughs> on the floor. I mean, the whole thing is just. You know, I always wanted to go to their Disneyland. What's that? I always wanted to go to their Disneyland. I used to get over there a couple times a year. I, I figure you could probably just eat right off the driveways and whatever because they keep things yeah. so clean. Did good. you go to their store in the Ginza district in Tokyo? Yes. Yes, yeah. that's good too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Been there. Yeah. yeah. There's a video, I don't remember who sent it to me, uh, of an American who speaks Japanese who does a tour of the factory hmm. with the president. Oh, You've I seen this? I haven't seen that. No. No, this this was sent to me a while back. I, this is one going down the rabbit hole. That's why I knew all about the white hazmat outfits. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. And the formality. We, we sent it, you sent it around. I, I, did, I did send it around. As you're describing it, I'm like, I think you've been there. You've been there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. Okay. It's an American guy who does almost like video blogs, but they're long and they're much more elaborate in their production. Huh. But he'd visited it. And uh, the spouse of the chair of the ZBA likes to pepper me with information about. Um, Saki Brewery and noted recently that they had to recall 250,000 bottles of sake because something happened where instead of having a uniform level of alcohol, it was varying from, I think it was 16 to 22 percent. So some people in the 22 percent were going, whoa, whoa. <laughs> immediately afterwards. <laughs> 
<laughs> what did, did they recall the 16 percent? <laughs> <laughs> All I can tell you is they, were, they, they took those bottles back. But the nice thing is, is that the takeaway I had is that that's really their de devotion to how high quality they want to make sure their, their products are. That as soon as there became even a notion that it wasn't that you're going to get something exactly. standard, they just went whoosh and took it all back. Well, so. when you're there, when you're in Japan, Dasai is the featured mm -hmm. sign. And there's probably 100 different brands of it. And, and there was, so we went to a, a really high-end Kobe beef. Mm. If you haven't done that, mm. do it. <laughs> Put it on your list. Um, and and that's what they served. That was the top was was that Wow! You know, so so that was cool. I know it was premium. Yeah, it was great to put the face behind it all. So, do we need an extra set to refer to Dust to, to County Planning? Or do we have an extra set already? You can make your delivery to the building inspector. Uh, we were trying to. I, we were hoping that we wouldn't have to do a, a December approval, but um, it looks like that we'll be able to avoid that now and work in through November. If, if the board BA. schedules the hearing for October and there are no issues, the zoning board, yes, that it could be a November approval by the, this board. November. By you'll be missing. We, we have a holiday party here, but you'll be, you'll be missing that. But that's no reason to make you <laughs> stay just to come and <laughs> party down with us at the very end of the year every year. So. <laughs> I make eggnog from scratch, but someone just suggested we have sake. No, also, <laughs> also, yes. Anyway, okay. we'll see you in a month. At the party. Thank you. Uh, great to have you here. Thanks Thank again. You. Have a safe drive back. Thank you. The next items on the agenda. I think you all had a chance. I heard from most of you. I wrote responses for proposed local law G, H, and J. Today, G is the definition of family, changing that. H is the deputy building inspector's duties. J is the telecommunications law. Uh, no one had any comments other than to say, great, thank you, which was yep. nice. Speaking of polishing my halo. Uh, so <laughs> Megan, any comments on any of the letters? No, just nope. thank you so much. Thank and you. they are so specific yeah, and, and helpful to yeah. the town board for, you know, you, you catch things that will make it a better law. I so hope so. Just thank you. That's all, Michael. Michael reviewed these. Michael I did. Wrote, Michael did the case law research. I did. <laughs> he loves case law. Yeah. <laughs> I actually love that. I love that particular case. The university <laughs> bought a place and decided they should use it for dormitory housing. And so because there's going to be an RA there that live, will live there more or less permanently, that it's a single family home. And they're like, no, it's not. And they applied more or less the same tests that are here, the sense of permanence, do they share bills? But more than that, they're still gonna close down during in, in between, and it could be a different RA. So when I read the case, it was like, perfect, they're doing the same thing here. Uh, so make it a motion to send the, the town board, the letters, the responses for G, H, and J. So moved. moved. Yes. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. And I wanted to discuss the videotaping law with you guys because yeah. I don't really believe that it's required for them to send this to us. It does involve actions by Ms. Moss as the zoning administrator and the building inspector, and that, that if someone disagrees uh, with their interpretation of what the fee would be, because it's very flexible. It's interpretive. It's very interpretive as to what is going to be used, the noise, the this, the that. But one of the things that struck me, and Victoria, feel free to weigh in if you looked at it, it's they use the term uh, commercial photography and they include under filming still photography Now, this is not to include the coverage of news political cultural right. local sports or school events but I think that this oh is gosh. broadly enough to find all of our Instagrammers are going to need a that's permit? not commercial but if you are well, hired to do if they're Instagrammers oh so many people make a living oh that's commercial because they're influencers or whatever. Influencers. I was thinking I more about what, they look like when they're what if you're a photographer and you're hired to do yeah, shots for weddings. At I mean, I've had acquaintances ask me if they could have their wedding shots done in front of my gardens. What if you had? Uh, it talks about public land. What if you wanted to do wedding shots at the Vanderbilt estate? Oh, people go to Vanderbilt all the all time. All the time. Yeah. yeah. So. But that's not town property. No, it, it, it's, it refers, though, to public property, of which uh, that's still public. I'm just, I'm, I think yeah. I'm going to write a letter, I think, and send it to you guys, because their next meeting is uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. Well, October seventh. Public, public property, though, is defined as any realty or personal property owned by the town of Hyde Park. Right. So there are spots which you might be wanting to take a picture on the river at Riverfront Park. So you'd have photos of the river behind you. Does that mean? And if you took one for sale, say at Nori from a town road that had a view have? of the river, does that mean you have to get a permit? That's a and what if somebody park, gets, what if the town road. clerk marries somebody at town hall and they have a professional photographer come? <laughs> I'm just, yeah, that's interesting. I think I'm just going to raise some issues and say, just think about these. Yeah. And yeah. Because it's, like it's, it's been happening outside. and it will continue to happen. It's all about yeah, I, needing permits it seems for mostly outside. Haven't, haven't, to stay inside. haven't we all known right. people who've had wedding parties and you go, let's, ooh, I know a beautiful place, and you just go and you do it? Pretty much, yeah. So uh, that's, I'm just going to make sure yeah. that, that, that they... They take a look at everything, that's all. That and also, I should add, yeah, yeah. Yeah. there's fees photography and fees for filming. At the parks, the national parks. Like no. weddings, you can, you can you have to fill something out. There's that's no for the wedding out. itself to be held at, like, there's no fees that's for, for Not for filming, not, not for photography. photography no. I see brides at. Park. Oh, you see them all the time at Vanderbilt yeah. and, mm -hmm. and all the mansions yeah. around here. They're all pictures of the king of the river. Right. At any rate, I'm going to keep taking a look at it, and I'll get you guys a draft or something Keeper before our news. next meeting so we can take a look. <coughs> but on this one, like I said, there's a lot going on in here. So whatever, guys, you, you, if you, there's anything you want to add when I send you the response, then let's add it in because I, I appreciate what, they're, what the town yes. board is doing because I know that filming can cause a lot mm -hmm. of... Uh, I mean, they're shutting down roads traffic. in certain areas of well, the county. Well, there's just like the, the, the film crew is just huge. Mm -hmm. Those, the giant trucks. So that's, I get why, why we're yeah, doing Yeah, no, no, no. That's so why I say I understand that. I want to just yeah. to make sure that they don't, that it's not defined they, so broadly. Just like with the building, deputy building inspector. Yeah. When it says all the delig all the duties and responsibilities therein. Yeah. That's a lot that yeah, Tad does. And yeah. if the, the deputy built again, what if Tad says that's not ready to go to somebody and they go, well, let's just go to the building inspector. And he says, well, yeah, it is. That's what do a, we do? Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. So I love I love that comment. I just want them to make sure it's <laughs> just the enforcement duty. So otherwise, I'll get on to, to this. Me it's like a it's a limit of scale when we that's talk about this with the you know doing photography. Right. It's, it's, an individual it's one taking one photograph. Like if someone isn't is going to stop stop. If traffic. someone is um, no. trying to put together a book or something and they're like, right. you know, all over the place about and the obstructing yeah, traffic disturbance. And, and I did see that they were filming that I believe the HBO series. Uh, mm -hmm that Mark Ruffalo's helming mm -hmm. was filming at Hyde. Yep. But I didn't see, I, I just went by and saw that they were setting up. I don't know if they- at A couple of times it was quite, or, it was, people were driving slowly because it was just like, ooh, <laughs> checking out all the old cars. The chance and, to see a star as well. Yes, the, the old cars were the um, star, I think. <laughs> That's why, yeah. Anything else from anybody tonight? Nope. Making a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Uh, all right, aye. thanks all. Yeah. Yeah. Such a ring. No. So thank you.